What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to today's video. It is Madden 18 time and we are wrapping up the regular season in this one. Just kind of going to go over the quick box score for each game so we don't take up too much time in the video. I don't want it to run too long. So let's take a look at the very first game. We're starting with week 5 and we were on the road against the Chiefs and we managed to win this one in overtime 23-20. to and then into the very next week, we faced the Tennessee Titans. Unfortunately, could not get the job done as we fell 17-12. to So that would make our record 4-2 here through the first six weeks of the season. Turned the ball over twice in this one. Russo did not have the best day. On to the third game in week 7. And we lose again, this time to the, at the time, one-win Colts to fall to 4-3 and three on the season. 27-19 loss. Now, these first three games I did play, and that was before I decided to just put everything in one ep into one episode. I was going to do three games an episode. So, these are all on me. Those are losses on me. And these are the resulting injuries from those three games. Talbot Smith dislocated his hip. He's going to miss uh, about two months. And Westbrook shoulder, tore his shoulder in the first uh, game. But he will be back in a couple weeks after the bye week. So our next game was against the Patriots. And we just blew them out 42-9. to And you'll see later in the video why that was a surprise. Just because of how good their quarterback is. Their rookie quarterback. Uh, but they turned the ball over twice. Us only once. We get the job done, so we improve to 5-3 and three on the season. And then we had our bye week. So I just wanted to give a quick rundown of the team stats to show you guys how the team is measuring up through the first half of the season. TJ Russo, 2,500 yards. 16 touchdowns to 8 picks. Yeldon, as Fournette just returned in the second game of the first three that I played. So he's played three games at this point. So that's why his numbers are kind of low there. L. Robinson, 50 catches already. Already 992 yards and six touchdowns. So at this point, he's on pace for about 1,800, 1,850 um, receiving yards. So very good. Travis Hawker doing all right. Westbrook having a very good season. A lot of big catches. Not too many catches, but they're all been very big ones. Keyshawn Norris, our first round pick, still looking for his first career touchdown. Luke Wilson, 5 of 52, has not contributed much this season. And then Cam Robinson leading the way, giving up six sacks. Our offensive line has been much better so far this year, though. I will give them that. Lindsey Henderson leading the way on the defensive side of things with 65 tackles. A.J. Boye behind him at 42. And Mike Mitchell, the guy we signed for a one-year deal, is in third there with 38. Avery Jones and Jalen Ramsey and Clayus Campbell round up the top five there with 36 apiece. As I just kind of scroll down there so you can see everything. I'm not going to name everyone by name, but yeah, the defense has been, for the most part, very good this year so far. These last couple weeks I've simmed have not been the greatest. Uh, but hopefully we can turn that around. So we'll move on to sacks now. Clayus Campbell leads the way. Ten and a half sacks. He's followed by Yannick Ngagwe with seven and a half. And then a five sack drop off for Miles Jack Jackson. And then Henderson and Smith with two apiece. And then a few guys with a half a sack. James Benjamin, our free agent. Our one real... A uh, guy we went after in free agency leads the way with two interceptions. And then there's like four guys with one. So let's move to the second half of the season. And we'll kick that off with a loss to the Broncos, unfortunately. They were also a one-win team at this point. So it seems to be we're beating teams um, that maybe we shouldn't beat. And we're losing the teams we should beat. So we fall down to five in five on the season. And we pick up a... Unfortunate injury. The guy that protects Russo's blind side is going to miss a month. Cam Robinson. So let's move on to the game against the Texans. We suffer another loss. 
And that actually puts us at five and five. Um, and then the following game was the Raiders, which we do pick up the 35 to 24 victory, as the Raiders turned the ball over three times to our one, and we improved to six and five on the season. But we do pick up another injury in that one, and it's a big one. Travis Hawker tore his bicep, expected to miss about 11 weeks, which pretty much keeps him out. Um, if we made it to the Super Bowl, we'd be able to be like play through the injury and select that and let him play, but it's most likely he's going to end up on IR, unfortunately. So the second-year player pretty much done for the season. And then we're going to follow that up with a loss to the Falcons. Big blowout loss in the Super Bowl rematch. And that would put us down to 6-6. Six and six. Unfortunately, we turned the ball over three times. The Falcons did not. And like I said, that puts us at 6-6 six and six with Four games remaining, two games behind the Titans for a division lead. So it's looking more and more like we're going to have to win the division in order to make the playoffs. And uh, that's going to be a tough road for us because we've been playing very inconsistent. And then you look at the AFC standings. And the Bengals and Steelers have a lock on the wild cards right now. So really our only shot at this point is pretty much... Winning out and winning the division. We do win this game against the Bucks 27 and 9. So we improve to 7 and 6, back over 500. And then the very next week, however, we drop one to the Colts again. 23 to 31 is the final. So we fall back to 7 and 7. Not good with two games to go. The Titans are 8 and 6, so they have lost two in a row. Uh, but we lost that one, so we only gained one game on them with two games to go. And like I said, at this point, taking a look at the wild card, the Steelers and the Bengals have it locked up. They're two games ahead of us. We'd have to win out. They'd both have to lose out. And then we have to win the tiebreaker, which we lost the Steelers, so we don't have the tiebreaker on them anyway. And then uh, we do, though, give ourselves a fighting chance by beating the Chargers, improving us to 8-7. and seven. Uh, and then we pick up another injury. It's Mike Mitchell. Torres rotator cuff. He's definitely on IR, ending his season 18 weeks. And then Hawkers, the way you look at it, seven weeks left. It's really only five or six games left, including the entire postseason, if we were to make it and go all the way to the Super Bowl. So we're just going to go ahead and put him on IR. We have Luke Wilson to play. We trust him. I mean, he broke all kinds of records last year. He has taken a step back, but he's still more than capable of getting the job done. And then, like I said, we're going to have to win this game in Week 17 against the Saints and expect a Titans loss. And then even then, I'm not sure we'll have the tiebreaker. So we do go ahead and beat the Saints 20-17, to putting us at 9-7. If the Titans lose, we got a shot. The Titans do lose, but as you can see, unfortunately... They had the tiebreaker over us. That's what happens when you go 1-5 and five in your division. That's, you know, that's going to lose your division every time. Our only win in the division was against the Texans. So we lost the Titans twice. Obviously giving them the tiebreaker. And effectively ending our season. And unfortunately, I mean, you probably could tell by the title of the video anyway. The series finale, uh, ending the series, could not repeat as Super Bowl champions, couldn't even make it back to the postseason. It's probably my fault because I simmed games, but, um, you know, we just wanted to wrap this thing up, move on to other things on the channel. Well, let's take a look at the season stats. One last time, Russo, 4,700 yards, 32 touchdowns, that's a career high, but 17 interceptions. Unfortunately, is also a career high as his rookie year. He had 31 touchdowns and I believe it was only, yes, 12 interceptions. Threw for almost a thousand extra yards. Of course, he missed like six games his rookie year. Played all 16 this year. Uh, rating did go down a little bit, so somewhat of a sophomore slump, but still a very good year for Russo. 
nonetheless. Leonard Fournette, having missed about five games, ended up with 676 yards, four touchdowns. Yeldon, 500 yards in the games that he started for us. Allen Robinson finished with 90 receptions, 1,600 yards, and nine touchdowns. Just missed the double-digit touchdown marker. Marquise Lee, 81 catches, did go over 1,000 yards. Three touchdowns for him. Westbrook, 725 yards, but he did have eight receiving touchdowns. Very good for him. Hawker, 435 and five before he got hurt. He was on pace for close to a 1,000-yard season. And then Keyshawn Norris, our first-round draft pick out of Alabama, did end up getting his first career receiving touchdown. As we scroll through, just kind of see the guys that didn't play too much. And then sacks allowed Cam Robinson ended up with 10. He missed a month, so it could have been a lot worse. Uh, so we definitely are not proud of those numbers. Drybach played very well in his spot, though. On to the defensive side of things, Lindsey Henderson, clear and above the best player on our defense this year. Second year guy out of Tennessee, 137 tackles, up huge from last year. Obviously, he didn't play much last year at 56 to 137. His sacks were actually not too much better, uh, a sack and a half more. But uh, like I said, he only played a little bit last year when Smith was injured. And then uh, Mike Mitchell, before he got injured, still ended up finishing second on the team in tackles. As I just kind of scroll through here, show you where everybody finished. Um, but yeah, the defense definitely did let us down the second half of the season. Avery Jones led the way tackles for loss with nine. And, you know, everyone is kind of down a little bit. We did not stop the run as well this year. And then sacks, Calais Campbell, team leader, 14 and a half, only had four and a half sacks. Actually, four sacks. I think he was at ten and a half uh, halfway through the season. So, only four the second half of the year. But it seemed like the entire defense of line just did not do a good job of getting to the quarterback. Boye, six interceptions. He had three of those in one game. Benjamin had four for us. So, definitely was a very good signing. We had 15, yeah, 15 interceptions as a team. Which I believe last year we only had like seven, so that at least is a plus. Then fumble, uh, forced fumbles. Henderson led the way with three. Couple guys with two. Miles Jack, Joey Cole, who Joey Cole played very well when given the opportunity. Uh, when Talbot Smith went down, it was only about four games, but you know he did play very well. And then Boye had our one pick six. And we'll take a look at the kicking, punting, kick return, and all that stuff still. Jason Myers had somewhat of a down year compared to the year before. Well, the two years before. 33 of 39, 84%. That's not too bad. It's, it's really the longest field goal was 57 yards. Whereas last year, I think it was 60. Missed an extra point. The biggest issue there was the two missed field goals from within 30 yards. Uh, but otherwise, he was 6 of 6 within 40, 7 of 8 within 50, and then he missed like 3 from out of 50 or, you know, longer. And then Brad Nortman ended up with a 47.7 average, net yards 2,500. Pretty good year. Um, used him more than we... Did last year, so that's not good. But And then in the return game, we did not have any return touchdowns this year. We had only had one in each of the previous two seasons. And then Killian Crowell, undrafted rookie, was our top punt returner. So let's take a look at stats through around the entire NFL. Aaron Rodgers was the top passing guy. Russo was second, 4,700 yards, about 500 behind him. And this is what I was talking to earlier in the video. The rookie quarterback for the Patriots, Graham Gallipo, 4,200 yards. He finished top three in passing yards as well. He's right under Russo. And Russo and Kondo, they're tied 32 and 31 respectively. So I guess they're not tied. But rookie Grant Copeland led the way with 21 picks. Russo, unfortunately, made the top five. It's tied with 17. 
And then yards per game, Rodgers was first. Russo was second at just under 300 a game. Then Kalipo right there again. Cooper Soros and Kerry Condo. So four of the top five were all second-year guys or rookies. So definitely quarterback position bright uh, for the future of the NFL. And then Devontae Freeman led the way in rushing yards. Touchdowns go to Ezekiel L at 18. Obviously, Fournette was our top guy. And he definitely did not play enough to actually get the top spot there. Let's go on to the receiving stats now. Jordy Nelson, 115 receptions. Adams was second. So the Packers were 1 2. Combined 224 receptions between the two. Allen Robinson led the NFL in receiving yards again at 1,627. So that's two years in a row. Had he not got hurt the very first season and missed a few games, I think he would have done it all three seasons. Uh, he led the NFL with average yards per game, the only one over 100. I think he only had a couple games, like maybe three all year, where he did not have at least 100 receiving yards. Touchdowns, though, he's not very high up. As he only had nine, could not get to double digits. We did not have any receivers and does double digit touchdowns this year. Then onto the defensive side of things, and the obvious Madden glitch all the time where they don't show our players for some reason in certain stats, like tackles at will, Henderson, um, but like sacks it won't show Clayus Campbell with 14 and a half when I get to it. Uh, tackles for loss. J.J. Watt, 29. Absolute monster he is. And then Melvin Ingram, Joey Bosa. Look at that. 46 and a half sacks between their two defensive ends. But as we scroll down the sack list, like I said, for some reason it doesn't have Clayus Campbell on here at 14 and a half. Uh, but it had Henderson for tackles. and It has Boye in for interceptions. I'm, it might just be a sack glitch. I'm not really sure. Eric Hendricks led the NFL 10 interceptions, so this is a linebacker with 10 picks. And yeah, like I said, Boye's in there, tied with a bunch of people for 6 picks. So it may just be a sack glitch that doesn't show the sacks. It's been like that for a couple years. And then forced fumbles, Jaquiski Tart, and uh, I didn't see who that was. Led the NFL, it doesn't matter, it's nobody, it's Davis Brown. Rashawn Hicks, a bunch of people there with... One defensive touchdown, Boye ranks among them. So let's take a look at the Pro Bowlers. We had three last year. And there's the rookie, Greg Galipo, or Graham Galipo, getting the start over Russo, which is absurd in the AFC. Pay your dues, rookie. But Russo does make his first career Pro Bowl. Allen Robinson makes his second straight Pro Bowl. Third straight, maybe. I'm not. I can't even remember back to the first season now. It's been so long. That does give us two Pro Bowlers. Uh, I'm not going to name everyone, obviously, as we go through, but you can see a player you like as I scroll through slowly, trying to find our Jaguars. We've got two on the offensive side of things, and that's all we will have. No wall line. Our O line's pretty bad anyway. No surprise, Bosa, with his 23 sacks, makes the Pro Bowl there. We'll scroll, see if we have anyone on defense. Ingram as well. There's 23 sacks as well. That's still crazy. 46 and a half sacks between two defenders or defensive ends. Malik Jackson makes it, so that's three Pro Bowlers for us. And once again, we get snubbed in the linebacker position. Boye with his six interceptions makes it, making it four Jaguars, which is a career high for us. Our previous high was three. Jason Myers makes it again. That gives us five Pro Bowlers, which is, like I said, three was the previous record. So that was definitely the record. And look at this. NFL MVP rookie Graham Galipo. It's crazy. Beats out Aaron Rodgers. I thought for sure Rodgers would get it. Russo does finish fourth in his second season. So following up rookie of the year with fourth place in MVP voting. Not too shabby for Russo. Coach of the year goes to Griffin Murphy. I could definitely see that. Uh, Galipo was apparently just amazing. 
Uh, Nick Waters uh, finishes ninth. He should have got it last year when he got snubbed, but you know this year he didn't really deserve it. Then on to the NFC Awards Offensive Player of the Year goes to Aaron Rodgers, who probably should be the NFL MVP. Patriots won one more game, so I don't know if that factors into it. Eric Kendricks in his 10 interceptions gets Defensive Player of the Year. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Zach Smolko with the Cardinals. Perry Bass gets Defensive Rookie of the Year in the NFC for the 49ers. Best quarterback in the NFC, Aaron Rodgers. Running back, Ezekiel Elliott, behind his 18 rushing touchdowns. Devontae Adams. O-line is Zach Martin. Best defensive lineman, Aaron Donald. Best linebacker, Eric Kendricks. No surprise there. Best DB, Patrick Peterson, Pat P. And best kicker, Dan Bailey. So now on to the AFC. Offensive player of the year goes to Garen Galipo, obviously. Russo finishes runner-up. Pay your dues, rookie. Uh, defensive Player of the Year, C.J. Mosley of the Ravens goes ahead and gets it. Ingram and Bosa probably should have got it over him. Henderson does finish 10th for us. Offensive Rookie of the Year, no surprise, Graham Galipo. You win the damn MVP your first year, you're probably going to win Rookie of the Year as well. Keyshawn Norris does finish 6th in that voting. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Victor Garner of the Raiders. And like I said, Joy Cole played very well when he got to play for us. He finished 6th. Best quarterback, Alipo, obviously, I guess, since he won everything else. Russo is 2nd. Best running back goes to Le'Veon Bell. We didn't have anyone. Kind of had to split backfield this year due to injuries. Allen Robinson gets snubbed for best receiver again. Best offensive lineman, Kalecki Asameli. And we didn't have anyone. Best defensive lineman, Melvin Ingram beats out his teammate Joey Bosa. Calais Campbell does finish 7th. Best linebacker, C.J. Mosley. He was the defensive player of the year in the AFC. And best defensive back goes to Malcolm Butler. Boy, he finishes 3rd with his 6 interceptions. And then Justin Tucker and Nick Folk beat out Jason Myers for best kicker. Which I believe he won that award last year. So now let's... Go ahead and just go through the postseason real quick. The Raiders beat the Bengals in the wild card round. Seahawks beat the Cardinals. The Titans beat the Jets to move on. So at least the team that kept us from going to the postseason wins. The Cowboys win as well. In the division round, the Patriots lose to the Titans. So the Titans go in the AFC title game. Falcons lose to the Cowboys. Steelers beat the Raiders. And the Packers lose to the Seahawks. In the conference title game, the Steelers beat the Titans ending their season. And the Cowboys crush the Seahawks. So the Super Bowl matchup is the Cowboys and the Steelers. And the Super Bowl champions are the Pittsburgh Steelers. So the team we kept out last year, we beat them in the AFC title game. They got revenge. They went all the way back. And they won the Super Bowl. So the AFC wins it again. And with that said, guys, that is going to be a wrap on this episode and a wrap on the Jaguars franchise series. Before we go, though, I just want to take a quick second to say thank you to everyone that has supported this series and supported the channel throughout the length of the series and just the channel in general. You guys have really made this the most special series I've had so far just with your feedback and positivity in the comments and... Yeah, it was just, I enjoyed watching these players grow and uh, just have you guys along for the journey was awesome. Plenty of great things coming here on the channel just because this thing's ending doesn't mean we're stopping anytime soon. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Till next time, peace.